<laughs> all right everyone welcome to the october 13th uh code review weekly um and well you've got the first if you want to read it otherwise we can pass to andrea um no mine's just an fyi um if you want to look at the competitor evaluation for suggested reviewers it's the issue's closed and there's a walkthrough video if anyone's interested and uh, moving forward I will come up with some initial designs for how we can integrate and review. And on to Andre. Sweet, thank you. I'll take a look at that uh, link. Uh, so this is Tommy's point. I, I had a one-on-one uh, -on -one with him yesterday and I'm presenting him, uh, presenting his point. So this is something that he would like to try out with the code review group. Um, so basically, this is something that was created by uh, someone in the quality team, uh, Sophia, and they've been trying it out for other groups. And what this is basically is uh, a way for the groups to identify their risks and with the collaborating effort, being able to, um, maybe I can share my screen in just a second. Uh, you'll be able to collectively build sort of a map, oh, sorry, sort of a map of Wait, where's the link? He had a link for, I should have prepared this better. So right, so basically this is a this is the engine that powers that website uh, and it generates sort of a, a list of risks uh, ordered by impact and probability. Um, so this is the impact and the probability of occurrence. Uh, and then it kind of gives us the whole group a hint about where the risks that we should be looking into. Is it lack of coverage in tests? Is it, unknowns that we might not really get the grasp on is it I know some other group was storage costs for example so this allows us to, coll to collaborate in categorizing the risks the identi identifying the risks but then coming up with um, a really easy to, to consume way but I, let me just find the link I'm just, I'm just gonna stop sharing this one real quick so that I can find the link that we, I put I it in the yesterday. agenda Andre you did I think it's the uh, second one. Yep, that's the one. Save the day. Thank you. All right, so that's how it looks. Um, and then inside this folder, it can list basically the, the efforts that are ongoing and the statuses, milestones and everything, then links to the issue. So this is all generated automatically. All we have to do to use this is just we create issues on a certain tracker. We categorize it with a certain labels and then the app does, its, does the rest, right? It kind of like, I think the way that he explained is that the um, the priority is calculated by multiplying the um, impact versus the how was the other probability, uh, and then he gives us like the the priority uh, results. So his point here was just he was proposing setting this up for code review. And he wanted to hear your thoughts about this. If you have anything in mind about this, whether it's a good idea, a bad idea, should we go for it? Should we not go for it? And so he has the goal here is not just for development of new features, but also having a resource to see what needs to be prevented and how best to approach it as well as identifying the biggest risks in the group. What do you think about this? Sounds good, sounds bad. I don't know. Uh, I don't understand how it works. <laughs> okay, so maybe I can do a better job at explaining. So um, the the code that 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 he linked here, the tool itself, is just a Jekyll that consumes the issues on the same on the project that we define. Then we author basically issues on the issue tracker, uh, creating like a risk, saying, uh, "Let's see what what will be a risk in code review." Um, Uh, not understanding a problem, certain something like that. We create the issue, or um, reviewers not like getting pinged uh, or something when they get a request for attention. And we would identify the impact of that. We would we'd classify how often would that you would that happen, and then the tool itself would aggregate sort of and would aggregate the efforts in in flight to address that risk. Uh, there are ways to assign uh, that. I'm not entirely sure how you assign issues to, to risks, but um, I, I, I think there's a way. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I think, I guess then I would be curious to know, like, 
if Tommy has some examples of things in code review he thinks it would apply to. I think the difference in sort of like quickly skimming the list and looking, many of those are like um, OPSI CI, like related to like, if we don't do this, like the database might go down because of X, Y, Z. Whereas I don't know that we have sort of as many things like that. We have like one of the categories looks like it's like slow, I don't know, something, um, slow endpoints, which we certainly have, but we also like already have priority and severity labels that are like, but I, I guess like, it's not clear to me, like, why would we add a third way to sort of classify Layer. things that we already have ways to classify and understand priority for the like things that I can think of off the top of my head. So I, I would, um, I guess my feedback would be like, if you can come back and say, here's a list of issues that might make sense to do this for, mm -hmm. then like we can have a different conversation right now. I'm just not sure. Like this feels like another input for inputs we already have. Yeah, in terms of like examples of risks and stuff, um, I can think of, of a couple of like technical debts, um, of complexity of the code, of performance deteriorating by adding new features. So those are all risks that we can classify and then contextualize certain efforts to address that. Uh, test coverage is another one where we have some test coverage in certain parts. We don't have other parts. How would we address that? Is that, a, is that an issue for the engineers to work on? Is that an, an issue for the quality team to work on? And this kind of aggregates all of those in one place. And it, I think his point when he presented this to me is that it, it allows us to think about risks rather than tasks. And, and, and then it still gets connected to the efforts that are being done. Um, so... But yeah, I feel like that's a totally fair ask. So uh, I'll pass that on over to him and he can do that asynchronously and try to give us a couple of examples of what would apply to us in code review in specific. Yeah, and I think the things you've mentioned are good. I guess then my question would be like, do we have issues for those already? And do they have like priorities and severities and are we calling them bugs or are we calling them tech debt? Or like, why, like you know, how are we already classifying those things? Or are we not? If the flip side is, is like, we don't even have any of those things documented, then like, maybe that's a different conversation. And then like, we'd need to do those things too. So like, I, I'd like to see, I think just more of like, sort of what- Wouldn't the issues come after though? Because if you think about it, for example, these examples that I just told you about, how do we know which ones are more important, right? By thinking, by, by following this framework of thinking, um, what is the risk, uh, impact and what is the risk probability and specifically about the one about performance deteriorating by adding new features. Um, what's the impact of that? It's a very popular page in our, in our group. Uh, what's the probability of that? We can think about how stable our code is and we can re relate that to other risks in the group. And, and that can help us kind of like focus on the most important ones. And if we get, we don't, we will, we won't get blindsided by something that it's like invisible, but it's creeping up on us, I think. So yeah, I don't see an objection from my part on the, on trying this out also because there's not that huge of an overhead cost It's something that he gets to set up on his side. We just have to fill it in with our ideas and participate basically if we, if we have any, um, but I'll, I think that he can come up with a couple of examples for us to discuss it further. Matt, any ideas, thoughts? Um, yeah, I'm willing to try it. I'm still a little, I have to think more about how, like Kai was saying, what the, what are some of the actual risks and how would we, how would we use this tool in our planning process? Or is it, is that the intent of it? Is it a, like a planning tool? Like, oh, this is a top priority and we don't have these scheduled yet, to these specific issues, or is it, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think the, use, the utility of it would be cross group. I mean, it would be also useful for the quality team to oversee different efforts that are ongoing and cross before, between the quality team, the product team and all that stuff. Uh, from our side, I can totally see us using this as another source of input for the planning. Um, 
but I don't feel like we need this to make the plan. It just makes our plan a little bit better because we'll be able to identify risks sooner. Um, but sure. it kind of like flips a little bit the thought process. Of it, but um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. So I'll I'll relay that to him uh, so that he can come up with because he knows the problem better. He knows the solution that uh, Sophia built better than 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 we at this point, and he can probably translate what he sees on their groups over to us. Um, but that's already a, a fair assessment to uh, specify what, what kind of risk we'd be identifying it. Cool, that's it then. Um, Kai, you got the next point? Yeah, I was bringing uh, number three is like an FYI, we talked about this. Um, I scrolled down to go find it again. Uh, I was repinging both of you on this. this is another effort out of quality. <laughs> Um, where they're asking us to pilot and test something. So we just need to respond and figure out if we want to do this um, and what the impact would potentially be um, to the group. And just for clarity, the, the proposal is that they would run end-to-end -end tests on all of our group's MRs, which would create pipeline failures if end-to-end -end tests fail. And therefore you would have to fix into in test as part of your regular work stream. Um, to me, this feels like more problematic potentially on the front end. Um, I know we've broken into in test recently and Phil was like, I'm not, even Phil was sort of like, I don't know how to fix that. Um, so, um, you know, I've got some concerns there that like we could, we could run into it, but I understand what they're trying to do. I just don't know if we want to, if we want to be a, a guinea pig here. Um, the one thing that I remember is that we've had a situation in the past where by breaking the QA smoke job, we, we were able to merge the merge request. And then it caused a situation where we couldn't deploy the staging or we couldn't deploy to an environment or something. So this is very important because it's something that very easily escapes our site. Um, because if this breaks later after merge, this essentially breaks the, the deployments. Um, and they have to quarantine the tests and all that stuff. So I feel like it's a great tool to have. I'm not so sure about running this on every build. I feel like it's something we want to run on a pre-merge kind of situation. Like before emerging, make sure that you run this kind of thing, more like on an ad hoc manual thing. So if anything, I'm probably going to ask, can we make that depending on an extra label? not just a group label, but like a opt-in voluntary label where the reviewer will be applying the label when they're running the pipeline and then seeing from there. Because it's useful for us, but to make it on every MR, on every version of the merge request being pushed feels like overkill for now. Because we don't have, we don't have to run it on every change we do. Most like when, all right, it's ready for review now. Let's run the Q8 smoke. It's ready for merge or let's run the QA smoke again. So yeah, does that make sense at all? Or am I going crazy? No, I think that's fine. I think like, yeah, I mean, in theory you switch it, you could run it on um, like the merge pipeline. You could run the job there and then you could fail on the merge versus like failing during dev. Yeah. But then the, then you're going to fail and you're going to have to come back and like fix it. And there's no good way to sort of like- But that's fine. Again. But that's fine. You, can, you know why? Because if that fails, then- we just avoided a merge that would cause problems later. And then at that time, we loop in Tommy. Hey, Tommy, we need your help here uh, if we can't fix it. But at least we avoided a yeah. breaking something in production. So I'm going to add my thoughts there. Thanks. Yeah, just add your thoughts there. Figure out what you'd like to do. Um, and we can go from there. Um, the next one is like an FYI questions, comments, I'm still trying to get clarity on it, but um, I think it is, as best I can tell, it is confirmed that backend is re-entering 100% engineering allocation, although no one has technically applied Matt's suggestion or responded for what that means for our sort of other work ongoing, um, but I, I, think, I, I think it means it all stops, but I think so. They did apply that suggestion this morning. So that's on there now. So at least we're in the MR, but the MR hasn't been merged yet. Um, at least last I checked. 
Um, but yeah, they have not responded to guys' questions yet. So, well, but as, as far as I know, we're going to be all in on security issues um, for the time being. And I think for Andre, the impact will be to front end, which we talked about. We've talked about some this week already is that we're going to have to find things that don't require a back end for planning, or we're going to have to look at issues that are cross section, cross product outside of our group that we need to go work on or that we want to go and tackle or larger efforts in that. So um, we just need to think yeah. about that, I think. So I'm finalizing the, the capacity for 14.5. Um, is it, by when do we need to finish the planning? Uh, tomorrow or Monday or yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> we do have some work is, to pick up. Go ahead. Kickoff is the 18th, which I guess means planning needs to be done like today, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah. And I don't think it tomorrow feels funky and Friday's friends and family day. So um, on the flip side, I don't think we'll have much for kickoff unless we are going to go tackle um the waiting for work but we yes. if we are then like we sort of already know that and that's sort of probably the big thing we'll kick off and then otherwise everything else is we can we can slot in and figure out um i think from a back-end perspective it's not even clear how engineers will get assigned to issues outside of groups yet i think dennis is supposed to like figure that out too so like i don't even know that the back-end knows how to do that yet um, and then the rest of the front end, we've got working group capacity as well as this effort and can sort of go from there. But I can give you this, that from our perspective, and I talked to, to Phil, you, and I told you this yesterday, that from our side, we're perfectly okay in tackling that request for attention or whatever we call it. Okay. What, what, what are we calling that effort again? I'm so mixed up. Requesting attention or waiting it, waiting for? I think it's called waiting for waiting for right so the front end is comfortable in picking that up and even if he does have some back-end involvement um phil stepped up and, and he's willing to take it on uh always looking in so it doesn't you won't need capacity from back-end except reviewing um so in that sense i feel like it's fair enough to include that in the kickoff that we're going to start pursuing the initial steps of that um what those initial steps are specifically it's probably going to be behind a feature flag um, to be safe and everything. So, yeah. So, from our side, I feel like it's safe to announce that, regardless of the final selection of issues, because the working group again, we don't have a deadline for the quarter. It's a until the end of quarter four effort, so we, we're okay in, in if we need to hit, hit a, a bit of that capacity. Uh, but then again, the other part is almost finished, the merge request merge rigid. So I feel like we're good to pick that up as a quite certain, even if we don't have the final plan before Monday. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. Um, I think that's it. And I can, let me 